Now it's time for today's science lesson. So, pay attention, class, because we're about to learn a groundbreaking principle. Hands up, who can tell me what this winged wonder has in common with airborne bonnets and flying saucers? That's right, they're all examples of Bernoulli's principle of fluid dynamics and pressure. Or, put simply, today, class, we're having a flying lesson. <laughs> All right, so, turning to page 12, Bernoulli's principle states that the faster a fluid, like air, is flowing, the lower its pressure will be. To take off, a plane has to create enough lift to overcome the force of its weight. Its wings are designed to make air travel faster across the top surface. This creates an area of lower pressure above the wing, contributing to lift. Once airborne, control surfaces on the wings and tail allow the pilot to change the flow of air and alter direction and altitude. To land, the pilot eases back on the throttle and reduces airspeed, using the flaps on the wings to maintain lift and avoid a stall. Right, that was the theory behind taking off, manoeuvring and landing. Now it's time to put your know-how to the test. First up, do you know what these aviation pioneers are lacking in their attempt to take off? They've got wings, lots of them, but without speed, they can't build up a large enough pressure difference to generate sufficient lift. To generate speed, you need a runway not a picnic bench. This car has got lots of speed. But now it has less. A race car uses Bernoulli's principle to generate downwards lift, keeping it pressed to the track. But as this car spun out of control and damaged its structure, that downwards force disappeared and the front lifted up. Oh, don't worry, mate. Bit of polish. I reckon that'll clean up. Question two. A plane has movable surfaces on its wings. But what are they for? By adjusting the speed flowing over each wing, a pilot can accurately control its direction and... Oh, watch out! <laughs> Paragliders don't have control surfaces. You steer them by pulling ropes attached to the canopy. It's not quite as responsive. A powered paraglider's height is controlled by changing speed. Or you could just fly into a tree. If he'd throttled up, the airspeed hitting the canopy would have increased, producing more lift to make it over the tree. But he, he didn't do that. Anyone know how to remove a tree from a paraglider? Now it's time for question three. We've seen Bernoulli's principle at work on motorised vehicles, but how does a hang glider use it to stay airborne? Like any wing, a hang glider works by making air move faster over the top. But instead of an engine, they harness gravity to generate lift. But when it's time to touch down, Bernoulli's principle has to make way for other scientific concepts. Like friction. Oh! Oh! You all right? I think I might have broke my elbow, I don't know. Uh, maybe you should try a safer sport, like snake juggling. Oh! And that class is Bernoulli's principle of fluid velocity. Lots of speed gives a large pressure difference and lots of lift. And lots of pain. 